Hey guys, uh, appreciate you guys all being here. Uh, one, just really excited today to uh, be able to uh, be the defensive coordinator at a great university like uh, Indiana. Uh, I really uh, put a lot of faith into uh, Coach Allen and I'm very blessed that he has afforded me the opportunity to come lead these, this great group of young men. Um, really was drawn to Indiana by, <clears throat> I, I probably got about in the country, uh, the great spirit, the culture, the bond that these guys play with, uh, the things they've been able to do have been amazing. Um, but it didn't just happen overnight. Uh, it was a process they went through. And, you know, from afar, from places I've been, seeing the growth and maturity of this team over the years has been amazing. So Coach Allen and the staff have done a great job. So I feel very fortunate to have the opportunity to uh, be able to come and be a part of this, uh, join uh, hands with these guys and be able to go forward. and. I'm really, really excited to be here uh, and really just can't wait to get uh, to the ballpark. All right, guys, when you ask your question, state your name and who you work with, okay? Let's start with Zach and then John Blau. Hey, Coach, sorry, my video's not working for some reason, but this is Zach Ostrom with the Indianapolis Star. Um, I guess just it, you've got a wealth of experience as a, co a defensive coach, obviously. What was it about maybe Coach Allen's vision, especially on the defensive side of the ball, that really just on your end made it a good fit? Um, I've been pretty fortunate to work for a decent amount of defensive head coaches. And that there's always a certain style, uh, a certain persona uh, you get from a defensive-minded head coach. So that, that, that's first and foremost, because being tough, having to tackle, being relentless in effort, those are all things that you preach as a defensive coach, and that, that's what we preach as a program here. So that was one thing. And then I think just, you know, his belief in me uh, to be able to come in here and lead these guys was big, and I felt that from the very beginning of the process. Um, so I think the whole culture here, uh, the bond that the players have, uh, the, the mantra of which the team beats is, is, is very – resonates with me. And with my background, discipline, accountability, toughness, those are all things for me with my background, been in the military, uh, things to me that really resonate. So I thought this would be a good fit. All right, John, and then Kevin Brockway. Hi, it's uh, John Blau with the Herald Times at Bloomington. Um, so, hey, Charlton. Um, so just in terms of your background, obviously you were a defensive coordinator at Air Force. You've gone through this kind of position coach route the last few years. I mean, was it always a goal to get back to the defensive coordinating, you know, position and role? And um, what about this scheme? I mean, have you played a lot of four two five, and and what's uh, kind of intriguing about working in that scheme? Um, I think at some point I always wanted to have, my, have a chance to get back to being a coordinator. But for me, it was always about fit. It was always about the right place. I just didn't want to go take a job to take a job. Um, and I thought this was the right place and fit, you know, again, based on the culture, based on Coach Allen's vision. Um, so, and for scheme wise, <clears throat> you know, four, two, five, uh, every place I've been, we've based out of basically a five DB personnel group. So whether it's four, two, five or it's a nickel package, whatever the case may be. So conceptually, a lot of the same concepts, um, a lot of the same families of, of pressures. Um, so a lot of stuff starts to be the, the same as. It's just a tweak here, a technique here, a fundamental here. They have done a tremendous job here of playing to their strengths, you know, whatever that was personnel-wise, which to me, any defensive scheme, you know, a good call ain't a good call unless your team, your players can execute it. And so to me, they've done an amazing job of using the talents they have, the players they have to get the most out of them based on the scheme. And they've adapted the scheme over the years. If you look at three years ago to last season, it's evolved based on their personnel. So I really like what they've done in that realm, and uh, I'm happy to hear, come here and just uh, add to it. All right, Kevin, then Matt. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, uh, CNHI Sports Indiana. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, secondly, um, I read where you were uh, named Mr. Intensity in college in terms of your weight room background. I'm just curious about how you've maybe carried that energy over into your coaching career and, and how you relate with players. I tell you, you know, the, the one thing I've always coached with a lot of energy and passion because of my love for the game and the love for seeing young men grow. Um, that's very exciting. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to be too quiet. You'll probably hear me from a lot of fields over and not in a bad way. It's just I'm very passionate about uh, the game. I'm very passionate about seeing kids make plays and grow 
And, and <clears throat> as a coach, when it clicks for a player and the light comes on and you see them playing full tilt, not thinking and just playing the game they love, it, it's very exciting. So for me, I get, I get uh, pretty wrapped up in that. So from an intensity standpoint, it's, it's passion. Uh, it, it's seeing these guys grow. Um, and, and I think kids feed off of energy. I think, uh, you, you know, coaches feed off energy. So I think the more energy you can bring, the, the better it is for everybody. And for me, I'm super competitive, man. Uh, don't play me in checkers. You know what I mean? I, I, I want to win. So I, I think for me, uh, the play, the game like that, to coach that way, and long as you're still learning, you're still being fundamental, and those things are at the forefront, I think there's, no, there's nothing wrong with showing a little emotion. All right, Matt and Dustin. Hey, Coach. Matt Weaver with uh, Indiana 247 Sports. Uh, hey, Matt. Congrats and w welcome to Indiana. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Um, my question is about recruiting. You've obviously you got a, a reputation as being a really good recruiter, got a lot of high-level guys, kind of a two-part. You know, what's your approach when you go recruit a kid and go into his, into, his, into his home, and what are you looking for? And then secondly, I know you got great ties to Georgia, being from there and being there the last couple of years. What other areas have you recruited in your, in your career? When it comes to recruiting, I think you you have to go swing, you have to get in the ring, and you got to be ready to battle. And to do that, I think parents and kids care about real relationships. They don't care about you trying to sell them on anything. And my job is not to sell a kid or a parent or a family on anything. It's to present a tremendous opportunity for you to get a great education, be developed as a man, be developed as a football player, and prepare you for what's next in life. That could be a husband, that could be a doctor, a lawyer, NFL football player, we're, we're going to have all those guys. And so it's about that family saying, I trust my son to come play for you and your organization, and you're going to do right by him. And I think kids and parents, they can weed out if you're not genuine. And so to me, it's about being who I am. It's about being relentless in my pursuit to know him, the kid, the mom, the dad, the grandma, the auntie, the coach, the influencers in their life. And so I think when you build genuine relationships and people know you care about them, their interests in making them better prepared for life, I think that's a home run. And then at that point, it's about them making an informed decision. And you know what? You're not going to get them all. But if you don't try, you won't get any of them. So we're going to try. We're going to get in the ring. We're going to throw our punches. And we're going to try to recruit the best young men for Indiana University to help us, our team develop as a culture and help us win uh, games in the future. And from an area standpoint, you know, I, I've recruited everywhere. You know, I, I've been at some different places, but obviously I have strong ties being from the state of Georgia, uh, being in the, in the SEC for four years. Uh, I've recruited the state of Florida for my time being at the University of Florida. So, and I sort of recruited nationally when it comes to DBs and skill positions. So for me, I can go recruit in Alaska if you need me to. If the player's good enough, I'll go there. All right, Dustin and Tom Brew. Charlton Dustin DePierrex from the Daily Hoosier. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, you mentioned, obviously, your, your military background, obviously went to college there, spent time in, in the Air Force, and, and obviously coached there afterwards. What was, uh, was there adjust, an adjustment for you when you started going from coaching cadets to uh, civilian players? And what, what was that like? And how much do you still sort of carry over from uh, that time? What's, what, what's different and what do you make sure stays the same? Uh, I tell you, people are people. And I think families, like I said earlier, are interested if you are invested in interest in their son's growth, maturity, and development. So I don't think the approach is different um, from building junior relationships. I think the type of player you were recruiting is a little different. You know, there's, when I was at the academy, there's a lot of restrictions, obviously, a lot of high academic standards, um, and things you have to, you know, deal with in the recruiting process that you may not have to deal with at Georgia or Florida or Tennessee. Um, and so I think there's no different. I think regionally, you know, based on where you are, um, how far you have to go away from campus, those are some similarities from coaching at Air Force where you have to have a wide net. In Indiana, we got to cast a wide net. Um, we like going into Florida and other places to get recruits um, to meet our needs. So I think that part has prepared me from a standpoint of recruiting in this environment. My time in Nebraska, cast a wide net um, in the Midwest. So. I think it's all boils down to being genuine, but I think you just got to know how far you have to go, the net, and that's why 
me being here is is pretty cool because I've recruited this area. I've recruited Florida. I've recruited in Texas and North Carolina. So the net and relationships I have with coaches and people in the community is, is big. So that's going to help me in this job. All right, Tom, and then Andrew. Coach Tom Brew from Sports Illustrated Indiana, welcome. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Obviously, what Tom has uh, developed here in the last few years, especially the last couple, and with uh, success and people noticing it more on a national basis, what is it about what he's doing with the foundation of LEO and the type of program that he's building that attracts you to it so much? I, I tell you, it's one of those things where the culture that has been developed here by Coach Allen and his staff is, is unbelievable. And, you know, in football and really in life, you know, talent takes you or a team so far and culture is what's going to get you over the hump because when talent is equal or talent fails, you know, the culture and what you're made of as a unit, as a group really comes to the forefront. So like I was saying earlier about my background being in the military, that's the mantra that we live by. So it's not really about one individual person having talent. It's about the whole organization, uh, the culture that's developed, helping us get over adversity. And it's a lot easier to overcome adversity when I got a hundred brothers than when it's just me by myself. So to me, that culture uh, with these kids uh, show you on a day in and day basis, the fight, the resiliency, uh, the ability to face adversity as a group and overcome it. Those are tremendous. And <clears throat> a lot of places don't have that. And so for me, that, that was a big draw to me. It gives me sort of back to my roots. Um, of what I'm used to, and I'm super excited. All right, Andrew, and then back to John Blau. Charlton, this is Andrew Chernoff with WLKY Louisville. Congratulations as well. Um, obviously, that was the big picture of the foundation of the program, but defensively, you know the stats that this team put up on that side of the ball last year. How exciting is it to take over a defense that was up there in interceptions, that had a ton of sacks? I mean, how much, how much can you sort of just grow off of that? Uh, it's awesome because there, there's a there's a foundation and there's a group of guys coming back that are bought into a system that they believe in. And so by no means am I coming here to, to, to disrupt that. What, I, what I'm excited to do is to take the pieces that have been great, um, look at ways that we can improve, because no matter if you're the number one defense in America or the worst defense in America, you're always trying to find a way to improve. Offenses always evolve. Coordinators change out their conference. And people love whatever hurt you last year, the copycat and do it next year. So we're taking a hard look at what made us great. Awesome. And then where are some, where are some deficiencies that we can improve on? These guys have done a tremendous job. So I'm excited to come in with a great nucleus and see what we can fix, what we can improve on, and what new wrinkles we can add to make us even better because we're trying to develop and we're trying to take the next step defensively as well. All right, John, go ahead. Uh, specifically, your position responsibility now is going to be linebackers. Obviously, you've coached a lot of defensive backs in the past, but as a defensive coordinator, I'm sure you've looked at every position, obviously. So uh, what type of experience do you think you can bring to the linebacker position? How much do you lean on a coach like Tom Allen, who has some experience at linebackers, and how much is this just a challenge that you wanted in terms of a different position group or just kind of fitting what uh, you needed? I think my eyes, you know, my whole career, I'm, I'm always looking outside in as a secondary coach. And I think that gives you a big picture view of how everything fits. You know, the safeties have to fit off the backers, the backers fit off the D-line. So I've always had a top-down approach, outside-in approach to coaching just by my eyes always being in the secondary. You know, at Georgia, I coached all five or sometimes six DBs at the same time. So for me, it's awesome from a, from a development standpoint and growth development to now be in the middle of the defense knowing what's going on the back end, understanding the front end. And I think with these linebackers, I could bring that big picture view. A lot of times, you know, in the box, you get this tunnel vision. Hey, I can see from tackle to tackle. Well, I'm hoping that with these guys, for their development, their growth, I can get big picture view from the mic in the stinger position. Making sure we understand what's happening behind and around me, right? And then <clears throat> obviously understanding my job in front of me. So. I think I can bring a big picture view just by the nature of my eyes been. And I think with Coach Allen having a lot of experience at the linebacker position, leaning on him for some of the key, hey, 
what are some eyesight keys? What are some footwork keys? What are some vision things to help improve them technically? So I'm super excited to coach that group. It's a great group of returning players. Um, and I'm really excited to coach those guys. All right, Zach, and then Stefan. I guess kind of along those, those same lines, um, and I know it's early, forgive me, but just conceptually, just kind of what do you see at the Husky position and, and maybe the blend of Husky and nickel? I know that was something Indiana kind of had some success with last year, maybe playing guys that were truer nickels but could still rush the passer and, and things like that. How much flexibility, I guess, does a position like that afford you as a defensive coach? And what do you, what's sort of your vision for how that, that role works within the, the, the structure of the 4 5 I think whoever's playing that spot is a playmaking spot. You know, you look at that guy that he can play man, he can play zone, he can blitz off the edge, he can blitz in the interior. Uh, I think it's one of those positions where the options are endless. And I think what we, we're going to do a good job of as a staff is see who our players are, see what best works for our uh, team defensively from a schematic standpoint, and put those guys as well as others in position to make plays. And by game, that could be different. By personnel, that could be different. And you can have different packages for different guys um, as you evolve the defense. So I think we have a lot of time to develop that position and see what we ultimately will be. But they did a great job of it last year. You have some guys turning off injury and had the opportunity to play. And you have young guys that are hungry to get reps. And our job is to find ways to put all those guys in position to make plays. All right, Stefan, wrap us up. Hey, Coach, it's Stefan with the Indianapolis Star here. Um, you hinted on it a little bit earlier, but just kind of, you know, the LEO foundation that, that Coach Allen has kind of been trying to build here, um, how much is that something that, that you saw on a national level, maybe even before, um, you know, this interview process began? And, and from someone who was on the outside, I mean, how much is that something that other coaches around the nation are starting to notice as well? I'll be brutally honest with you. Um, I saw that from afar with videos and at places I've been, we actually use some of those as motivation for my, my previous team because it's so inspiring. And I, I think it, it gets uh, contagious, right? You see a group of guys working their tails off for a common goal in the face of adversity, in the face of a, the bigger opponent, the national scene, it doesn't really matter because of the genuine love they have for each other. And for me, at my previous stop, we use some of that to motivate our players to see how things can be done. So for me, that's tremendous because if you don't really have a culture um, of, of love for each other, if you don't have a culture of development, you know, like I said earlier, talent's only going to get you so far. The love you have for each other, the brotherhood you guys share, the bonds you form is what's going to get you over the top. So for me, huge draw. It gives me back to really who – my roots are as, as, a, as a kid, as a coach, as a man. And it really excites me about being part of this organization. 